स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया okay so let us now look at uh, look at another case of generalization of the euler lagrange namely the case containing more than one independent variable and let us restrict our attention to this case having just one dependent variable right <coughs> so this is a case where the functional contains two independent variables we will see that this case is significantly harder to solve <coughs> right so let us gen let us develop the theory in this case using an arbitrary domain formulation and then we are going to restrict that domain into r2 okay uh, so so let us now say that we have a domain omega where omega is a simply connected domain students can look up in google as to what i mean by simply connected but uh, basic uh, mathematics students should know should be familiar with these terminology right so essentially i am saying that this is a domain which is uh, which is nice it does not have any pathological problems right so omega is a simply connected bounded region simply connected bounded region in r2 with with boundary del omega right and we have that omega bar or omega closure it contains contains omega as well as the boundary of omega so this is the closure of the of the set omega then we further describe c2 of omega closure the set of all continuously second order differentiable functions in omega close in omega uh, closure right so this is the space of functions u from omega closure to r with continuous second derivative with continuous second order derivatives second order derivative so we consider the functional so now we are ready to describe the functional in this case so we consider the functional of this form we consider a functional uh, of the form of the form j of u is equal to the double integral notice now we have two independent variables so that will involve two integrals double integrals of x comma y so x and y are independent variables u comma comma ux comma uy right dx dy i call this variable as p i call this variable as q okay so let me call this functional denote this expression by this this equation by a so the variational problem is as follows the variational problem says we need to find we need to find u in c2 omega bar such that j is an extremum j is an extremum subject to the boundary condition subject to the boundary condition given by u of x comma y is equal to u not and u of uh, subject to the boundary condition this such that boundary condition this such that x and y is in is on the boundary of the domain omega 
right? So, this is my boundary condition where x y lies on the boundary del omega. Okay. So, then I also have to describe the perturbation to such class of functions. So, let, let us describe the perturbation. So, consider consider the perturbation. Consider the, the, the perturbation in u, which is going to be u hat, which is u of x comma y plus epsilon eta of x comma y, right? Where where epsilon is small, where epsilon is small and and eta is c 2 of omega right epsilon is small and eta is is on uh, is uh, on c 2 of the domain or second order differentiable function inside the domain omega bar such that such that eta vanishes on the boundary for all x y on del omega eta vanishes on the boundary so using taylor series we are ready to expand our integrand for the functional in terms of uh, in terms of the extremal u right so we are ready to write the function the perturbed function in terms of uh, the function evaluated at its unperturbed value so f of x y u hat p hat q hat is also equal to f of x y u plus epsilon eta u x plus epsilon eta x u y plus epsilon eta y right this is also equal to using taylor series going to be f of x y u p q plus epsilon of eta of del f del u plus eta x del f del p plus eta y del f del q and then and then the next are the order epsilon square terms which are the higher order terms right so this has been expanded now up to the first order so again the goal is we are trying to figure out the euler lagrange equation for this two independent variable case so we have right now written the integrand in terms of uh, using the taylor series we have expanded the integrand so then finally my 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 variation in the functional j del j of u which is j of u hat minus j of u is epsilon of double integral of omega eta of del f del u plus eta x of del f del p plus eta y of del f del q right dx dy plus order epsilon square terms these are the next order terms which we do not care at this stage. Okay, so, we have now written the variation in terms of this double integral and we know that we know that if j has an extremum j has an extremum in u it implies that we necessarily must have variation of j is 0 right so then again the goal is to change this integral constraint into a differential constraint and to do that we have now we have to utilize the so called greens theorem right because we are now working on an arbitrary domain omega so the greens theorem in 2d is as follows so recall recall greens theorem in 2d we see that the Green's theorem says that the double integral of phi x plus psi y 
dx dy is also equal to the sing line integral over the boundary of omega phi del y minus psi del x right for for any function phi and psi from omega bar to r such that such that phi comma psi comma phi x comma phi y are 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 all continuous right so such that these are all continuous so let let phi be equal to eta of del f del y and psi be eta of del f del q right so phi be eta so i am going to use the green's theorem for a particular set of phi and psi which are described by this following quantities so let us now replace phi and psi so let us now replace these two quantities on well let us replace these two quantities in the left hand side of this theorem when we do that we see so we apply green's theorem let me call this shorthand notations gt so we apply green's theorem we see that the left hand side becomes the double integral over omega of well phi x has two quantities so we use product rule eta x del f del y well del eta x del y uh, we well well let me uh, there is a minor change here we are we are going to use del f del p and del f del q so so that's that's it so this is eta of eta x of del f del p plus eta of del del x of del f del p right plus plus eta of del del y of del f del f del q right so that is my second expression psi y plus eta y of del f del q right okay so we are we are quite ready to move ahead uh, so this is the integral with respect to dx dy so using green's theorem this is also equal to the line integral over the boundary of phi uh, of well of of this quantity dy minus eta of del f del q dx right i can take eta common i can take eta common and we see that this integral is going to vanish because eta is zero on the boundary of the domain so this integral vanishes which means this integral on the left hand side also vanishes and we are left with the fact that well let us see what we need we need let us go back one slide we need the following we need to replace these two quantities right on in in let me call this as let me call this as expression b right so notice that these two quantities are sitting here this one and this one is sitting here so from green's theorem we get that the double integral of these two quantities eta x del f del p plus eta y del f del q dx dy is also equal to minus of the double integral of eta del del x of well dd that will be equal to yeah del del x of 
partial f partial p which is this quantity plus uh, del del y of partial f partial q right and this is also equal to dx dy times dx dy. So, let me call this as let me call this as uh, as as b prime let me call this as well let me call this result as b prime right. So, I am going to use b and b prime. So, using using b prime in b I get that let us go back two slides let us go back two slides we see that the variation of j with respect to u we can now we can now uh, replace some of the quantities using b prime and to see that for extremal for extremal I have that delta of j now must be 0, but on the other hand this is the double integral of the following quantities eta of partial partial x of partial f partial p plus partial partial y of partial f partial q minus partial f partial u of dx dy right. Now, again now we have been able to successfully separate out the perturbation function eta and the next step involves invoking a generalized version of lemma 2 in, in discussed in our lecture 2 to change this differential sorry this integral constraint into a differential constraint. So, then next we invoke we invoke lemma 2 we invoke lemma 2 in lecture 2 a generalized version generalized version of lemma 2 in lecture 2 to see that this is also equal to that that this condition equal to 0 this integral constraint equal to 0 reduces to del f del x del f del p plus del del y del f del q minus del del u is equal to 0 right <coughs> ok. Ok, so what we have is the following we have we have that we have now uh, found the Euler Lagrange equation for the system with two independent variables right. So, let us now look at an example in this case. Uh, so, notice this example. So, let my omega my my domain be the disk which is given by x square plus y square less than 1. So, it is a unit disk and let let us say my functional j is the following quantity double integral of p square plus q square where p and q are the derivatives of u with respect to x and y with respect to the boundary condition with respect to the boundary condition u naught of x is equal to 2 x square minus 1 right. This is for all x y in omega uh, well not this one we have this boundary condition for all x y on the boundary of omega which is nothing but the boundary of the unit circle right ok. So, so when we apply this uh, when we apply the Euler Lagrange equation which is the boxed equation and we apply the Euler Lagrange equation we see that we are going to get at the extremal satisfies the following partial differential equation which is nothing but the Laplace equation. The Laplace equation the solution is not not very very short it is a very lengthy exercise to, to solve this Laplace equation with the given boundary condition, but 
students are asked to verify that the following function satisfies the Laplace equation with the boundary condition. Verify that u of x y which is x square minus y square is a solution to this problem. Right? So, we have just found I am just writing the solution to this equation and the students are asked to verify that this indeed is the solution which satisfies the boundary condition. So, check that. Okay. So, then let us look at another scenario. We have another example here. So, here we, we describe let us describe a curve r bar from omega to r cube. So, now I have a functional containing three dependent variables. So, be a function of the form of the form the following form r bar of x comma y is equal to x y comma u of x y right. Then, then r bar describes describes a surface r bar describes a surface sigma in r 3 given by sigma in r 3 given by j of u is equal to the double integral square root 1 plus p square plus q square d x d y right. So, here is the here is the functional that we have to optimize given uh, well given this curve of this form right. So, again we apply we apply the Euler Lagrange equation to see that well let me quickly write the Euler Lagrange it involves all partial derivatives. right to see that this is also equal to negative del del x of u x 1 plus x square plus y square minus del del y of u y which is square root of 1 plus u x square plus u y square which is also equal to 0 right. So, we see that when we when we evaluate this necessary derivatives we see that after simplification my Euler Lagrange equation assumes this monstrous form. It assumes this form 1 plus u y square uh, minus 2 u y u x u y x plus u y y 1 plus u x square divided by divided by 1 plus u x square plus u y square to the power 3 by 2. So, this is set equal to 0. Okay. So, to find the extremal to this problem we have to solve this monstrous equation this monstrous p d e, but however notice that people who are familiar with surface kinetics notice that this particular equation is nothing but the mean curvature of the surface that we are talking the surface in 3D. So, so which means so the expression on the left hand side is nothing but the mean the mean curvature. Okay. So, the solution is such that the mean curvature has to be 0. right? and we cannot solve analytically at this stage this equation has to be solved numerically. Solve numerically right. So, we need to solve numerically. Okay. So, so I am going to end my discussion in this lecture by mentioning the following issues. So, far we have looked at two different cases. The, the, the extensions of Euler Lagrange namely the extensions containing functions of several dependent variables and extensions containing function of several independent variables. 
it is also that the boundary conditions also decide the fate of the solution of Euler Lagrange. In particular, the boundary conditions are going to decide whether they are going to decide whether the Euler Lagrange equation is ill posed, the Euler Lagrange equation is ill posed or well posed, right. Let me just quickly give an example. For example, if we have a hyperbolic PDE, a hyperbolic partial differential equation along with the Dirichlet condition, more often than not this is an ill posed problem, right. And on the other hand, if we have an elliptic partial differential equation or an elliptic PDE along with the same Dirichlet boundary condition, more often than not this is a well posed problem. Right. So, m students are asked to look at more details related to the boundary conditions in this following two books, one given by P. R. Garbadian, well this is a Spanish author Garbadian uh, which is on PDEs. Uh, second edition, Chelsea, published in 86 and another book by F. John, also on PDEs, which is the fourth edition Springer. Uh, Springer uh, published in 82. So, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you.